Welcome to the W3 Schools CSS Positioning Tutorial. The CSS positioning properties allow you to position an element. You can also place an element behind another and specify what should happen when an element's content is too big. Elements are positioned using the top, bottom, left and right properties. However, these properties will have no effect unless the position property is set first. They also work differently depending on the positioning method. There are four different positioning methods. Let's start with static positioning. All HTML elements are positioned static by default. A static positioned element is always positioned according to the normal flow of the page. Look at these P elements. They appear one after the other. This is what we call normal flow. Elements with position static are not affected by the top, bottom, left and right properties. Now let's look at fixed positioning. An element with a fixed position is positioned relative to the browser window, like this P element. The position property is set to fixed and is positioned 30 pixels from the top of the page and 5 pixels from the right of the page. It will not move even if the window is scrolled. Elements with fixed position are removed from the normal flow, so the document and the other elements behave like the fixed positioned element does not exist. Since they are removed from the normal flow, elements with fixed position can overlap other elements. Like this. Now you see that the text overlaps the other elements. Let's look at relative positioning. A relative positioned element is positioned relative to its normal position. This heading is moved right according to its normal position. Its position property is set to relative and its left property is set to 20 pixels. So it's positioned 20 pixels from the left relative to its normal position. Let's try moving it. Now this heading is moved left according to its normal position. It's moved by setting the left property to minus 20 pixels. So it's positioned minus 20 pixels relative to its normal left position. Let's try moving that too. Relative positioned elements can be moved and overlap other elements, but the reserved space for the element is still preserved in the normal flow. Let's see what happens if we overlap two elements here. Now these two elements overlap, but the reserved space for the element is still preserved. Now let's look at absolute positioning. An element with an absolute position is positioned relative to the first parent element that has a position other than static. This heading has an absolute position, but it has no parent elements with a position other than static, so it's positioned relative to the page. It has position absolute and has position 100 pixels from the left and 150 pixels from the top. Let's try moving it around. Now it's positioned 200 pixels from the left and 200 pixels from the top of the page. Absolute positioned elements are removed from the normal flow. So the document and other elements behave like the absolute positioned element does not exist. Since they are removed from the normal flow, elements with absolute positioning can overlap other elements, like this. Let's look a bit closer at overlapping elements. When elements are positioned outside the normal flow, they can overlap other elements. The setIndex property specifies the stack order of elements. 
This is how you specify which element should be placed in front of or behind other elements. An element with greater stack order is always in front of an element with lower stack order. An element can have both a positive or negative stack order. Now we change the stack order for this image from minus one to one. And now it appears in front of the text. But what happens if the content of an element is too big to fit in the specified place? The overflow property specifies what to do if the content of an element is bigger than the element's box. Here, the overflow property is set to scroll. So the content that won't fit is still there, but you have to scroll to see it. Here, the overflow property is set to hidden. So the content that won't fit is hidden from the user. The default value is visible. If the overflow is set to visible, the content that won't fit overflows from its box. On the W3Schools tutorial page, there are more examples and we list all the CSS positioning properties. And there's a link for each property that goes to our CSS reference where you can find more information for any CSS property. And this concludes our tutorial for CSS positioning. Thank you for watching.